Luke, I want to start with, we saw you walking in with a Bus One Boys shirt. Is there merch? Uh, there We had it at the very, very tail end of last year, I think. Shout out to Kara. Uh, oh. So I was, I was wearing it, but yeah. I mean, Sam will wear it sometimes. We wore it, I think, in maybe Miami. I think Miami. I don't know. Okay. It was we got to get more. I'm sure the fans would love that. It was a limited release, and it was exclusive, so I don't know if we, uh, you know. Yeah, it's like the more limited it is, the more desirable it is. Absolutely. Or supply and demand. That's there how it works, yeah, right? Curves. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Decrease the supply all the way down. Yeah. I'll have a conversation with Kara. Do my best. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'll Sounds work good. on that. Uh, the dab, the spaz dab celebration. How long have you had that one in your pocket? Uh, I thought about it at some point, I think, this year or last year. Okay. And I didn't, I wasn't actively thinking about it when it happened in the game and it just happened. And then I just thought, well, there's no going back. Right. And so then now it's out there. Um, I had thought of it before. I never thought it'd really happen. I guess I, I mean, it's been, the Spaz Dab existed or the Dab in general yeah. for many a year. Uh, Why well, I decided then, I do not know. You, you say you're not on TikTok though. So then where do your inspirations come from? Well, this is the thing is that was in my, I mean, not in TikTok, but that was in my social media presence of uh, like six years ago. So I, maybe I'll, someone said this, could, like, remember planking? Yeah. I, I could plank next if I got fouled or something, but then all of my references are like a old dad where it's like, just, you think you're being cool, but it's past its time. Number one, I know you're really good at research, so I believe in you that you can find some more current references, but also planking would be hard to do on a basketball well, court. You're just going to fall no, forward. Well, yeah. If you got fouled like and one layup Ooh. and you're there and you just, held it while people were trying to come get you. Um, I was known to do that back in high school days. I was, a, I don't know if I was a much different person then, but I was the type of person who would plank if that says anything, which I think it does. I find it interesting that there is thought that goes into this, but what is it in the moment in the game, do you have to be feeling to break one of those out? You just gotta, yeah, you feel the energy because because yeah. I actually had a tip dunk right after and I thought I could, do that something way, again, right? but it felt like I would have been. There's a weird line of celebrating and having fun, but then also trying not to make it into too big of a deal. And I try not to. Well, I, but sometimes you, I don't know. It's you got to feel it. You got to feel the moment. Yeah, we also play professional basketball, by the way. We play in the Knicks tonight, and we played in Chicago the other day. We will get there. I promise. I know. Yeah, I know. I was just. It's just some. It's interesting sometimes how. Yeah. Well, and then my next question was going to be: Is that you do play? a role on this team in that bringing the energy on the bench. Jason Tatum said he thinks that you are the funniest guy on the team. I mean, how much do you cherish that and also relish it and, and see the importance of it? I don't know if I cherish it as much as adamantly work every day to try to maintain it. Uh, there was a void with, with Blake gone. Honestly, he was the stiffest competition that I've ever seen. Probably the funniest person in NBA history. I think also a part part of that is being able to be genuine and serious, and so that it's not just like a gotcha. a shtick. Yeah, exactly. You don't you don't want that to happen. But you also yeah, it's it's a weird thing in the room. That's it. I'll 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 put that on my tombstone maybe. That Jason Tatum said you're the funniest guy on the team. Yeah, right after hopefully more things that are more. I don't, I appreciate it. It's kind of fun. I try to have a good time try to play basketball and do those both simultaneously, which is, yeah, you know, you saw that firsthand when I, I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. I feel like like you said, we I edit these. It's fine. You're good. Yeah. This is, that's why we have editors and that's why we're doing it so early. They got plenty of time to yeah, cut around. Yeah, stuff on the cutting room yeah. floor. I like that saying. Cutting <laughs> room true. floor. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You got it. You're a pro, a true pro. Uh, speaking of this game tonight, playing the Knicks, are you a big believer in revenge games? This has been the revenge tour, actually. The Chicago, yeah, Chicago, New York, uh, seething would be one way to say it. I anyone who knows me knows that I hold large amounts of bitterness towards anybody who's ever wronged me, uh, and so of course tonight is no different. I have just been staring at, I don't know. I guess it'd have to be like some sort of image or something, uh, just angry. Kind of an I yeah, of a man who wears pants or makes pants. A Dutch immigrant who makes pants, I think, is what. <laughs> A Knickerbocker is, I believe. I don't really, I'm not sure what it is, to be honest. I think it's something about Dutch immigrants, though. Yeah, I'm I not, appreciate I mean, your I'm anger. just trying to win the game. I was yeah, referencing Kristaps Porzingis. 
Uh, wait, with and what? His revenge. Oh, his revenge. Yeah, because oh, he plays really he's well. Like, he's played really well against the Knicks yeah, this we season. Had the, we had the opening, the opening night game, right? Was yeah. This, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. No, that's probably a more notable revenge game for Chris Daps than it is for me, given his history. But, yeah, not a lot of people are just like, man, that cornet. But the other way around, it's pretty a lot of animosity towards the guy. I think he's, I don't know, pretty nice guy. He's been great since yeah. he's been in Boston and really enjoying the experience. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I love the guy, you know? He's just yeah. nothing but positive energy. Absolutely. Yeah. For you personally, how far do you feel like you've come in this season and defining a role for yourself? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's strange in that I feel like the role has not really changed, although the way in which it's manifested has been like I, I'm just trying to stay available and stay ready and um, kind of provide whatever the team needs on the given night which I think uh, sometimes it's more screening and hold stuff sometimes more running transitions sometimes it's more uh, protecting the rim so whatever it is that I can do on that night is what I'm just looking to try to do so and that way I don't feel like the role has changed a lot but I do feel like um, yeah I've had a lot of opportunities this year to um, be able to come in and help our guys and um, I'm very appreciative of that and um, looking forward to doing it for the rest of the season. That way you be my manifested? Because I feel like your game has developed. It's changed and, and kind of realizing at what, what pace to play at, where to be, and, and kind of not overthinking things. Uh, yeah, there's a, that's actually been something. There was a moment uh, earlier this year where uh, one of our assistant coaches kind of brought up of like, we know you can impact the game just from like a mental side, but like uh, just kind of bringing up like the physical side of things and really kind of developing that. And I feel like that kind of helps make something click in terms of like exp or embracing that challenge. And um, honestly, sometimes like what has been your strengths can actually kind of become your weaknesses because you don't allow other things to grow. And I do think uh, that has been something this year where I've embraced just kind of the physical aspect of the game a lot more. And I mean, in a game like tonight as well, I feel like against the Knicks, they do a great job of that. So um, yeah, you kind of have to meet that battle and uh, not be too much caught up into the other stuff and just kind of physically do what you need to to be able to help the team win. That is where I'd like to end this conversation. What are going to be the keys tonight against the Knicks? Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like, um, obviously, I feel like controlling the glass against them is uh, where a lot of the battle begins and just the necessary physicality, both defensively and offensively, that you have to play with. Um, I think just offensively, our ability to execute against them and um, just be consistent with that throughout the game. And uh, I mean, obviously, with Brunson, he presents challenges and uh, some of the other guys offensively, it, yeah. I mean, being disciplined and kind of knowing scouting report type stuff and uh, their tendencies is uh, always important for us. Luke, best of luck. Thank you for your candor and your humor. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Number one funniest guy on the team, as I've voted that. by. It hasn't been a consensus, uh, unanimous situation, but I've got one vote, apparently. I mean, it's a pretty yeah, yeah. important vote. Uh, all, all votes are the same in the. Uh, I don't know if that is how that works. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, just I'm not sure it's a democracy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't Luke, know. thank I don't you. I don't know yeah. what that works. Yeah. <laughs>